design of anchorage length. The design anchorage length for a reinforcing steel to be embedded in concrete is given in these equations as given in clause 8.4.4 in Eurocode 2. The equation is based on the basic anchorage length which is given in clause 8.4.3. On basis of the basic anchorage length here, there are factors that affecting the required anchorage length of the steel bar. This is represented by the coefficients alpha 1 to alpha 5. The ratio between the amount of reinforcement bar required per the amount of reinforcement bar provided and comparison with the minimum anchorage length required for the specific reinforcement bar. The minimum anchorage length here is governed by different types of the anchorage, whether it is under tensions or under compressions. The minimum anchorage length here it will be the maximum value of the three components as outlined here. It needs to be at least greater than 10 times the diameter of the steel bar and also at least 100 mm. In terms of the basic anchorage length, a minimum of 30% and 60% is required for the tensions and compressions anchorage respectively. The design anchorage length here need to be greater than the minimum anchorage length. The basic anchorage length here is obtained based on the equations here. This equation is in fact the same equations that we derived in the previous videos. The equation here express the basic anchorage length in the form of the design bar stress, which is the characteristic U strength of the steel bar divided by partial factor of safety. The partial factor of safety for the steel is equals to 1.15. Combining these equations into the equations, the equations will be exactly the same as in this. The derivations of these equations has been discussed in the previous video. Within the equations for the basic anchorage length here, there is an ultimate bone stress. It is calculated based on these equations which is given in clause 8.4.2. In principle, the ultimate bone stress of the reinforcement bar is basically governed by the design tensile strength of the concrete. It can be calculated based on these equations, which is in the functions of SCTK and partial factor of safety of the concrete and the coefficients of concrete under tension. The characteristic tensile strength of the concrete can be obtained from table 3.1 in Eurocode 2. There are two factors that affecting the ultimate bone stress as represented by eta1 and eta2. Eta1 represents the effects of bone conditions while eta2 represent the effects of the bar size. Under a good bone conditions, eta1 will be equal to 1.0, while under the poor bone conditions, eta1 will be equal to 0.7. As for eta2, eta2 equals to 1.0 when the bar size is less or equals to 32 mm. If the bar size is more than 32 mm, this equation is used to determine the eta2. The definitions of good bone conditions is given in figure 8.2 Eurocode 2 part 1. The symbol A here represents the directions of concreting. 
A bar is considered in good bone conditions when it is bent at the angle greater than 45 degree and less than 90 degree. When the overall depth of the member is less or equal to 250 mm, the reinforcement bar is considered in the good bone conditions. However, when the thickness of the member is greater than 250 mm, the regions at the bottom 250 thickness is considered in good bone conditions while the other regions are considered poor bone condition. In the case that the thickness of the member is more than 600 mm, the top 300 mm is considered the poor bone conditions while the rest of the sections is considered to be good bone conditions. Based on the regions of the reinforcement bar to be encouraged within the member and whether the reinforcement bar is bent, we are able to determine the bone conditions whether it is good or poor. From there, we are able to determine the factor eta1 to be equals to 1.0 or 0.7. There are also other factors that affecting the design anchorage length as given in the coefficients of alpha 1 to alpha 5. The conditions represented by the coefficients alpha 1 to alpha 5 are outlined here, which include the bar shape, the concrete cover, the confinement by transverse reinforcement, the confinement by welded transverse bars and confinement by transverse pressure. Based on the list of the coefficient here, we know that alpha 3 to alpha 5 refers to the confined conditions of the anchorage region. The exact value for the coefficients can be determined from table 8.2 in Eurocode 2 part 1. The coefficients vary between the tensions and compression coefficients. Under compressions, the coefficients are generally equal to 1.0 except alpha 4 as 0.7 and alpha 5 is not considered. The equations to determine the coefficients in tensions are outlined here. The coefficients alpha 1 and alpha 2 is also affected by the type of the anchorage. The anchorage can be in the form of the straight bar or the other shapes. These are some typical anchorage methods for steel bar. It can be in the forms of hooks or bands. Provided that the minimum dimensions given here is satisfied. In the case that the hooks and bends are used for the tensions anchorage, there will be a minimum bending radius. For the steel bar less than 16 mm diameter, a minimum bending radius of 2 times the bar diameter is required. If the bar size is more than 16 mm, a minimum of 3.5 times the bar diameter is required as the bending radius. It is noted that the bends and the hooks are not recommended for compression anchorage. However, in the case that the hooks and bends are used, the anchorage length will be as given here. It will be only governed by alpha 1, which is referring to the shape of the reinforcement bar. And the minimum bending radius is given here. It is basically the double of the bending radius required under tension condition. Now we look into the equations to determine the coefficients one by one. Under a straight anchorage, 
the alpha one will be considered as 1.0 under the bank or hook conditions the alpha one will be considered as 0 0.7 when the CD is more than three times the bar diameter otherwise alpha one will be taken as 1.0 the value of CD can be obtained from figure 8.3. It is basically in the functions of C1, A and also C. C represents the cover from the soffit of the member to the main reinforcement bar. C1 represents the cover from the side of the member to the main reinforcement bar. And A represents the clear distance between the main reinforcement bar. In general, CD will be equal to half of the A, C1 and C.